been doing chapters 11 and 12, which uh, talk about the major lifestyle diseases, cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes. Chapter 12 uh, is uh, on sexually transmitted infections. So infectious conditions, things like that, that is related to life. Now, uh, these three are pretty much um, diseases of lifestyle, and some of them even aging. So we'll talk about how those relate, things like that. So before we start talking, um, the first thing you need to know about is the cardiovascular system. So how the how the heart and blood vessels work and what they do, right? So uh, we're going to talk about what they do first and why they're important. Of course, keeping your heart uh, healthy is important throughout your life because obviously it allows you to live. Um, but the cardiovascular system has organs of blood vessels, which blood flows through it, carries nutrients to your body. So we're looking at the elements of the cardiovascular system. First off, uh, number one, uh, you know, whether you're aware of it or not, of course, you can put a car on your day, but your heart contracts about 100,000 times a day. It pumps six quarts of blood throughout your body, providing things like nutrients and oxygen. It takes away waste products, hormones, enzymes throughout the body. Uh, and this process regulates temperature. So the water going throughout your body is pumped through your heart. Um, this helps regulate your temperature, uh, regulates water levels and acidity, and also helps to prevent against uh, things like uh, big things like toxins and microorganisms, so it's part of your immune system. So your circulatory system in your heart is very important, obviously you couldn't live without it. Um, I want to explain how it works and why it's uh, important for you to manage and take care of it as you now, for the circulatory system, besides the heart, there's three things you need to be aware of, these three. First off, your heart pumps oxygenated blood out to the body. It goes through the arteries and arterioles. So those are the main vessels that take blood out to the body, right? Um, the, the, the blood is exchanged at the cellular level, at the tissue level, with what are called capillaries. Capillaries are very small um, vessels that carry the blood and nutrients and exchange those with the tissues in the body. So capillaries are kind of where things are exchanged, like oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, uh, everything else that's exchanged, right? So that's the smallest vessels. And then when everything comes back to the heart, they come back via the veins and venules. So if you look at your body, you probably see veins, they're usually blue. Blue is kind of the sign of the oxygenated blood. Those return the blood to your heart. So what we have is a pump, which is the heart, pumping blood out to these vessels, which is your circulatory system, and it works in the loop, right? It loops around. So let's talk about how that works. First off, it's important to understand the, what, what the heart does and how it works and why it's important to keep it healthy, right? Now, the heart itself is just a pump, and it's a pump which has four chambers. There's two atriums and there's two ventricles. And so attached to those chambers are different vessels that bring the blood to and from the heart. So we're going to start the circulatory system with this number one, which is the blood that comes in from the veins into what's called the superior vena cava. Okay? And that brings all the blood back to the heart via the veins, right? All that blood dumps into the right atrium. It's a small chamber on the top of the heart that starts the beating. So the heart kind of beats in a sequence, like that. It beats one side and then the other. So that's how it kind of goes right now, right now. Okay, it's a sequence. So the right atrium then pumps that blood down into the right ventricle. Now the right ventricle collects the blood and then pumps it back out. Now in between these chambers, there are valves. The valves open and close depending on the pressure. So the, the system works by a pressurized pump with valves. Now that right ventricle then contracts and it pumps the blood out to what's called the pulmonary arteries. Pulmonary arteries are the arteries, the oxygenated blood that goes out to the lungs. Now when you breathe, you know, all that blood is exchanged at a small level down in your bronchioles. All the carbon dioxide comes out, all the oxygen comes in, and the aqua blood is oxygenated again. Of course, the oxygen is part of the fuel that we use along with food to provide our cows and our energy, right? So that blood is oxygenated, and then it's returned via the pulmonary vein, um, goes down to the left ventricle. Now, the left ventricle is kind of the biggest, strongest part of your heart because that one pumps blood back out to the rest of your body. So it goes back out to the aorta, uh, which is the largest vessel. Uh, you got your arteries that feed your, your head and neck and your brain, which go up to your neck. And then they go back down to your portal system, which dumps into all of your organs. And then finally back out to your body through your arteries and your muscles and stuff like that. So this is one big system that just 
gets blood in, goes back out to the oxygen, comes back in again, goes back out to the body to circulate, okay? And once again, we're talking about why it's important to keep this thing healthy. Now, what we're going to talk about today, and the reason is there are certain uh, vessels that uh, oxygenate the heart that call coronary arteries. We need to keep those healthy because we want to prevent heart disease and heart attacks. So what do I need you to know about the blood flow in the heart? Just know how it comes in, how it goes out, and the process of it. Now, to maintain the pressure or the blood pressure for the heart to pump, it's a closed system, right? So what happens is if you happen to, you know, for some reason lose a lot of blood, your blood pressure will drop down, and that's dangerous, right? Because you want to keep, uh, keep that system pumping. So if you lose pressure, your blood pressure drops, uh, and the pump doesn't work as well anymore. So we want to keep all that blood in us, obviously. We want to keep the heart running uh, as long as possible. Now, heart is a combination of muscles and an electrical system that helps us pump in the sequence. So there's all kinds of uh, things that go on with the heart. There's a whole subject of medicine called cardiology that deals with the heart. Um, and you know, hopefully you will keep your heart healthy for you. So first off, uh, pathway for blood circulating in your heart. Make sure you know those four steps. We just discussed that, okay? So why is this important? Because cardiovascular disease is the number one killer. So we talk about things that kill people throughout your life. The number one by far is heart disease or heart attacks. These things is what is killing you. So it's 33% of deaths that's higher than cancer, lung disease and accidents all combined. So we talk about things that end up killing you. Typically this happens as you age. You're going to, uh, one third of them is going to be contributed to heart disease or heart attacks or strokes, okay? So that's why it's so important that we have to understand what causes this and how you can prevent it as you age, okay? First off, what is the prevalence among gender and ethnicity? So uh, as you can see, this is men and women uh, throughout ages. And you can see, you know, when you're young, the, in the incidence of it is pretty low. So most of you are pretty healthy. You probably don't have heart disease unless you have a you know, you could have a genetic thing or something you uh, got, you're born with. But most people, when they're pretty young, they don't have an issue with this. Uh, but you can see as you get to 40 to 60, the incidence goes up, about 40%. When you get to 60 to 80, about 70% of men and women have it. And above 80, about 85%. So almost everybody has it as they age. So it's a, it's a process of aging. So as you get older, your heart um, will get basically, when you age, you'll start to get some of these diseases that creep up on you. Now, for men and women, there's differences. Typically, um, men can die a little bit younger because women were thought to have some kind of hormonal protection against heart attacks and heart disease. Um, but it does catch up to them at around menopause, around 50. So they catch up to men. So men and women have equal levels of heart, heart disease and heart attacks at a certain age. But you can, you can also see that this it just increases as you get older. So as you get older, your risk of these heart attacks and heart disease goes up. And that pretty much happens for everybody, but we can help prevent some of it as well. Now, they mentioned ethnicities. Um, certain ethnicities like African American, I think also some Hispanic groups uh, can also have higher blood pressure. Uh, for, for some reason, uh, some of them have, for example, higher blood pressure, uh, and higher rates of heart disease. But a lot of that is tied to culture, diet, and um, some of it is, is like people who are living in poverty or lower income levels tend to. Um, <coughs> Experience more than healthy lifestyles, high blood pressure, obesity. Um, maybe you don't have access to uh, medical care as much as people who have um, higher incomes. Okay, so those can um, be part of the disparities. So we're going to talk about all the things that would cause heart disease and heart attacks coming up in the next couple of sections. So as far as uh, gender, uh, men and women have pretty much equal levels of heart disease and heart attacks, especially after the fifty or so, which is after menopause. Men present a little earlier because of, of uh, differences in hormonal factors as well. All right, so we're going to look at the things that lead to heart attacks. One of the major ones being hypertension or high blood pressure. So if you haven't heard of this before, high blood pressure is also known as the silent killer. That means is you can get this, you can have this, and not know you have it. So you can walk around with high blood pressure and not even know you have it because you don't feel anything, right? So the way you measure it is uh, you go to the doctor, they put a cuff on your arm, they measure your blood pressure, we'll talk about that. Now the risk for uh, high blood pressure is the higher the blood pressure in your body, the faster you can get heart disease. So you want to keep your blood pressure low. 
Um, particularly as you get older, because you, as you get older, your blood pressure tends to go up. And the reason is because your, your, uh, your arteries and vessels, they get harder, they get more um, uh, inelastic as you get older. So when the blood pumps through them, the pressure goes up, right? So it's a, it's a risk for heart disease because it increases the risk for cardiovascular disease, that's CBD, uh, heart disease, heart attacks, strokes, and also enlargement of the heart. So high blood pressure can cause damage to the vessels and things like that. So it's important that you keep an eye on your blood pressure, especially as you get older. Some people have a high blood pressure in their family, so they have to manage it. Okay? There's certain things you can do to help lower it, like uh, healthy diet, exercise, and your weight can help lower your blood pressure. But some people have to take medication. All right, so blood pressure is measured in two parts. Uh, there's an upper number and a lower number. So if you went to the doctor and they took your blood pressure, they'd say your blood pressure is 120 over 80. So the first number is systolic pressure. That's the pressure that when your heart pumps, that's the pressure your heart pumps. So that's the high number, right? And then the diastolic pressure is when your heart's relaxed. So they put a cup on your arm, they pump it up, and then they see how much pressure you have in that, that vessel, right? Um, and then once again, we'll talk about it in a second. So systolic is the top number, 120, and then diastolic, the bottom, 80. So when you get it measured, they're just measuring how much pressure is going through your vessels at that one time. So you go to the doctor to get that done. Uh, I recommend, you know, even when you're young, uh, get a doctor if you like and start, just go once a year and just get a checkup. They'll check your blood pressure, they'll check your cholesterol, all that stuff to make sure that you're staying on top of it, okay? So it's a good idea when you're young, and then that way, if you keep going, and you start having issues, they can get on top of it. Because what happens is if you have high blood pressure for 20 or 30 years, and you don't treat it, you're gonna have all kinds of damage and stuff. Same thing with diabetes, high cholesterol, all these things. So the goal is to be aware of your symptoms, like what you have, and try to control it. Okay, so we wanna control blood pressure. So what is high blood pressure? Well, normal blood pressure is around 120 or 80 or below. They call it elevated around 130 or 80. Um, and then when you get the high blood pressure, there's two stages, uh, 130 to 140 or 80 to 90. But the cutoff really is, uh, by doctor's measures, is this one right here, 140 over 90. So if you're consistently measuring over 140 over 90, you're considered to have high blood pressure. Um, these uh, these uh, measurements here are just considered elevating, but elevated if you're considered to be really high blood pressure. So if you're 140 or 90, it won't just be one measurement, they'll take it a bunch of times. And if you, if you have high blood pressure, then they'll consider, okay, maybe we need to have it lose weight or exercise. And if they can't control it, they probably put you on medications to lower it. Okay, because we don't want to keep the blood pressure high for a long period of time. There's all kinds of problems. We have heart problems, there's kidney disease, there's vessels, uh, increase your risk of stroke, all kinds of stuff if you have high blood pressure. So you don't want to uh, keep that there. So, once again, keep an eye on your blood pressure, and you know, that's something that can go up on you guys, even when you're young. Some people have it when they're in their 20s or 30s. There's other stress and positive, all kinds of stuff. So keep an eye on your blood pressure, uh, and make sure you're measuring it, you know, try to measure it once a year or something to see where you're at. And if it's high, then get a treat. Because 20 years of high blood pressure can go up damage to your heart and blood vessels, okay? So make sure you know the ranges of high blood pressure and what are the classifications. I would generally say, 140 or 90 or higher is considered high blood pressure. These ones are considered one to one. So what is hypertension? It's never that high blood pressure. And caused by uh, the vessels. So there's a lot, lots of causes, right? Uh, actually, if you're under a lot of stress, you can get high blood pressure. Um, if you're um, overweight or obese, you can cause it lack of exercise, poor diet, uh, specifically like eating a lot of salty foods. All right, so this, all this stuff leads us to this. This term is called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is another term for the buildup of plaque in your arteries. Um, so it's, it's a long combination of fatty substance, cholesterol, calcium, fiber in your arteries. And what happens is with high blood pressure and other things, your arteries get damaged, and then when they get damaged, they lay down the plaque, which is like, like a scar tissue, right? But it has calcium and stuff. If you get too much of that, we'll clog your arteries up. And we'll talk about that problem in a second. So atherosclerosis is often called coronary artery disease, CAD. This is um, basically your, your arteries and your heart. Okay, because this happens throughout your body, but why it's important in your heart? It's because 
if you get those arteries closed up and you, and you get uh, blood flow to stop your heart, you, you, your heart will stop and you can have a heart attack. So we're trying to prevent heart attacks here. So we want to keep those, uh, those, those vessels open, right? Because if they, if they close up, you can have a heart attack. And, you know, you can survive a heart attack, but a heart attack kills a lot of people too. So we want to make sure that those vessels stay open and we stay healthy, okay? So what happens is you start getting science your arteries are closing, you get this thing called ischemia. Ischemia is lack of oxygen. It's also called angina in your chest. So when you're active, you get a lot of chest pain and uncomfort. So your heart is, uh, doesn't get enough oxygen. Okay? Um, this also happens in the lower extremities as well, and the feet, calves, or legs. It's called peripheral artery disease. So what happens is you're getting clogs, but also in, in down in your lower extremities. You don't get good circulation in your feet, so people who get this, uh, people with high blood pressure can get a little uh, obesity and diabetes to get this. So what, what happens is, um, you'll see people who get really uh, heavy at diabetes, their feet will change color, they'll be like brown down their legs, and they get poor circulation, so they'll be gain green and have to chop them off so they have more applications. So people at risk for this high blood pressure, diabetes, all the way to obesity, uh, those people can get the loose hair off their feet, cows, or legs. So it all comes down to this. There's two pictures here. This is a normal artery. And just imagine like a hose, you know, when you turn on the hose and that water's flowing through it. When it's open, it's open, right? So the water flow is really good. So most of you probably have these open feet arteries right now. But as you age, you get damage to the arteries due to different things like high blood pressure and things like that. You start to get plaque and starts to drop in the arteries, right? So the arteries close up. So look at this opening. So imagine you have a hose and you pinch it, and then you know the water starts doesn't go through as much. So the blood flow goes down and this is the problem because then your heart's not getting enough oxygen. So then a, then a blood clot comes along and it lodges in there. And then you know, if your heart gets no oxygen, then what happens? You have a heart attack. So if you have clogged arteries, it risks heart attack. So we want to try to keep those open and prevent heart attacks, right? And happy to do what we're going to talk about that, all the preventions you can do. But your doctors can see if you have this, right? They can do a scan, they can do a measurement to see. There's also surgery we'll talk about when you clear this out or open it up. But uh, by staying healthy, we want to uh, keep the blood flow going, right? This happens to everybody as they age, by the way, to a certain extent. Some people more than others, but just like blood pressure goes up, that goes through. That's a process of aging. We want to try to uh, minimize it as we get older. So we want good blood flow. We don't want clogs, right? So how do we prevent clogs? So I want to ask uh, somebody, atherosclerosis. What is that? What does that mean? Anybody? How about Nathan? What is atherosclerosis? Um, it's often called coronary artery disease. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, it's due to the damage of the body between coronary arteries and the arteries. Okay, so what's happening to the arteries with artery disease? What's going on? You saw that picture, right? What's going on inside the arteries that's a problem? Not sure. So the arteries are filling up with that plaque, right? And that damage. So when it fills up, what happens to the blood flow? Does it go up or down? If your arteries are filling up. Do you have less blood flow or more?
What about peripheral artery disease? Remember that? That was just clogging in your uh, extremity arteries. So what does that mean? That just means uh, you know, circulation and things like that. So you don't get uh, you don't get those those kids that can lose those arteries and stuff like that. Okay. People with the highest risk uh, obesity, high blood pressure, people with diabetes have a higher risk of peripheral artery disease. So what happens is they can get infections, they can lose their feet and toes and stuff. So make sure you know what those two are, right? I, I just went over it with you guys. Um, you should uh, do the questions so you, you have a good test. All right, so that kind of covers the first uh, set of stuff. I'm not gonna look at the side on tomorrow. But just make sure you're, you know, you're going through your questions as we do the notes. As usual, we're gonna you know, take a couple weeks to get this material. So we'll continue talking about this and why it's a problem and how you can prevent it, right? Uh, heart attacks, strokes, things like that. Because uh, remember, it probably won't affect you now, but you want to take care of yourself now so you don't have a problem with it later. So see your doctor, get your checkups. If you have problems, then get those taken care of. Because uh, now, what you do now is what you're going to do to prevent this when you get older. I know a lot of you are thinking about when you get older, but um, like for instance, if you have high blood pressure now, you want to get it under control. Because if you wait too long, it'll do its damage. Like you can't start doing treatment when you're 50 because you've had 30 years of damage, right? You want to start now if you have problems. So how do you find out? Go to the doctor and get a checkup. Okay? Go to your doctor once a year and have them check you. See if you have high blood pressure, you've got high cholesterol, things like that. So, you know, get checked with your doctor. Okay, so finish that up. Uh, there's still, uh, how many people don't have, still six people who haven't turned in nutrition project. It's due to down the grade tomorrow. So if you haven't submitted that yet, get it in. Um, we've got about a week and a half on the test, so i got to grade it. Okay, remember that's the like, like side of the test. So make sure you get that done if you haven't turned it in yet. Right? I've been telling you guys for a whole week now. All right, so finish the nutrition if you need to. Any questions, uh, we'll continue tomorrow and continue moving on. We have about two more chapters, I'm sorry, two more tests, and then a couple of projects and activities at the end of the semester. But we're coming down to the last seven, eight weeks here, guys. So please keep an eye on the grade and what's missing so you can stay caught up.
stuff up, please. Make sure your uh, nutrition uh, stuff is turned in.